Welcome to Course Grinder's fifth C++ tutorial. Today we'll be looking at basic math and how we can use this arithmetic inside of C++. Let's start off by doing the exact same things we've seen before. We're going to use our preprocessor command, include with the hashtag in front of it, IOStream in triangle braces. Next, we're going to define our namespace using namespace std. And we're going to put the semicolon after that. Now we've got to build our main function. We're going to be using integer data and we're going to be expecting an integer back. So we're going to write int main, which is the name of our function, it has to be called main for the main function, which is the spine of our program. You're going to put an open and close bracket to indicate that we are looking at a function right now. And then you're going to put a open curly brace and a closed curly brace and everything inside of there is going to belong to the main function. We're going to also have a return value down here. If we get down there, which means we have successfully uh, gone through the main function. Now, let's start off by defining a variable x. We're going to define it as 2 plus 2. So can we have that addition arithmetic inside of our variable assignment? Will we be assigning the value 4 to the variable x? Well, it's going to find out. The only way we can really find out is if we print it out on screen and see what it tells us x it means. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to print out the variable x on screen like we've done many times in this series. And let's go ahead and press the build and run button. Now, what are we going to get out of this? We're going to see we're actually going to get the number 4. So it does work the way we thought it would work. You get 2 plus 2 and it gets 4 and it actually accounts for it. It's not going to be just the x is equal to 2 here. It will actually account for everything between um, the equal sign and your semicolon to end the line off. Does it work with other operations? Let's actually take a look. Let's go ahead and go 5 minus 2. Let's look at subtraction. Let's go ahead and press run again. So we should see the number 3 if this ended up working, and it did. We see 3, so it's still the same thing. It is considering the same arithmetic. How about multiplication? Now, one thing to consider with multiplication, you do not represent it by an x. I know it's tempting to represent it by an x because that's what your calculator does, but you are going to use the asterisk. And it's a good habit when you're on the computer talking about multiplication. Use the asterisk instead of an x. It makes everything a lot more clearer, and it will work more often. So we're going to have 5 times 2 here, and then let's see if it's going to give us the value of 10 that we're looking for. Awesome. We see right here we get the value of 10. So everything seems to be working just the way we want it. How about we go with division, right? 5 divided by 2. We expect 2.5 out of that, right? 2.5. Let's go take a look at that. And we get to... Uh-oh. What's this? 2? Where's? My, I think they just shorted me some change here. I'm missing, 50, uh, I'm missing 50 cents here. Where did that half go? Now remember, what are we working with? We are working with integer data. What are integers? Integers are whole numbers. Now, you didn't even get rounded up. Like I said, integers are ruthless. You don't even get any rounding. You're going to get the first number and everything below that where the decimal should be. Everything beyond the decimal will get cut off. It doesn't exist because we did not define, we did not allocate enough memory for the variable x to have decimal places. You know, we could have easily given it more um, memory by calling it a float instead of an integer, which we'll get to later on, but we didn't because we didn't want to spend that much memory. Now, you got to keep that in mind. When you're doing division, you got to remember, if you're dividing into something that's going to have a decimal place, keep that in mind. It's going to disappear unless you actually assign more memory to it. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Now, where did that remainder go, the part that we're missing, right? Where did that go? Well, that's actually something called the modulus operator. So let's go ahead and remove that division, which is the slash, and we're going to put a percent symbol in the same direction that we had before. So instead of having the slash, let's just go ahead and directly replace it with the percent symbol. And what is this going to give us? Let's press run here. We're going to get the number one. This is your remainder. Now, when you have five divided by two, we know that we're going to have two remainder one, right? So the remainder is going to pop up in the modulus operator. So if you want to know how much is not getting accounted for and how much wasn't able to be divided, that's what's going to come up. So it's always one thing to keep up. And we can always design this into a more intricate program if we wanted to. So how about we do that? Let's go 5 divided by 2. And on the next line, let's go with the variable y. And we're going to call that 5 modulus 2. And we're going to put that there. Now let's go ahead and make everything look a little bit fancy here. We are going to write, let's add a bit of text here. We divided to there. And on the next line, the remainder is, we should put those spaces here to make it look nice. Remember, just even though it's just us looking at it, we need to still make it look nice. Let's put out the variable y there, end line, and let's go take a look what happened. 
So look, we divide it to two, which means, you know, five divided by two, we're going to get the two and we're going to have the remainder is one. And we're going to have that one here from the modulus operator. So that's one thing I want you guys to consider when you're doing basic arithmetic. The division, you got to be careful because if you're working with integer, you got to leave that. Just keep that in mind. That's all you guys got to remember. Or else if you're, if you're too worried about it, you should work with float. Floating point numbers allow you to have decimals and it'll allocate more memory. So you're going to have to spend more memory, but you're going to get the precision you need. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll have more videos coming up later on. Thanks.